BMW of small, relatively affordable EVs now looks like this, the iX1. Visually it's little changed from any other third generation X1, but under the skin everything's different with a choice of single or dual motor powertrains energised by a 64.7 kWh battery. This dual motor model offers rapid performance, remarkable traction and promises a bit more of an involving driving experience than you'd expect from a lower mid-sized EV crossover of this kind. In short, a pricey package, but one with considerable potential. It was critical that BMW's third generation X1 crossover should also be available in full electric form. Most of this model's key rivals now offer that option, so the iX1 is extremely significant for the Munich maker and effectively acts as the new entry point for the company's growing range of EVs. Now it doesn't have bespoke EV architecture underneath, but then many current segment rivals don't yet have that either. The advantage of this from BMW's point of view is that an FAA R platform shared with combustion X1 variants allows the iX1 to be built on the same production line at Regensburg in Germany. So, is this contender going to really worry direct class rivals like the Tesla Model Y, the Audi Q4 e-tron, the Mercedes EQA and Volvo's XC40 Recharge Pure Electric? You're going to need the industry's most comprehensive review, the car and driving road test, to find out. So what's it like? Well, as you get behind the wheel, there's a music accompanied animation of the instrument cluster that ends up on a BMW i. Pressing the center console silver start button, Ben sees the dashboard screen spring into life. You're ready, but for what? Like all EVs, this one springs away from rest with alacrity, even if you opt for the feebler of the two iX1 models on offer, the base single motor front driven 204 horsepower iX1 E-Drive 20 variant which offers 247 newton meters of torque and between 268 and 296 miles of range. Here though, we are trying the much more powerful dual motor all wheel drive X-Drive 30 version you'd ideally want, which offers 313 horsepower, 494 newton meters of torque and between 257 and 272 miles of range. Both variants use the same 64.7 kilowatt hour, that's usable capacity, battery, and both, if our experience here is anything to go by, are much closer to a 200 mile range reading in the real world. This iX1 xDrive 30 pairs the base version's front axle mounted motor with a further one at the rear, creating the usual nominal all wheel drive system you get on dual motor EVs. Whichever variant you choose, you'll find the motor or motors fitted, uh, each putting out 188 horsepower, to be of a particularly sophisticated sort, combining power electronics and transmission in a single compact housing. Despite a curb weight of over two tons, both iX1 models feel pretty brisk, and if you can stretch to this all-wheel drive version, you'll get quite a potent package. The twin motor system's prodigious torque output gives the iX1 xDrive 30e significantly more performance than rival dual motor Audi Q4 e-tron or Mercedes EQA models. Specifically, uh, we're talking of a rest of 62 mile an hour sprint time of just 5.7 seconds, though there's the usual rather limited EV top speed, in this case 112 miles an hour. If you wish, the acceleration can be accompanied by a fabricated powertrain noise curated by Hollywood film composer Hans Zimmer, though if, like us, you think its audible reference is closer to a tube train than a conventional power plant, you'll be pleased to find that you can switch the sound off. Another thing you can fiddle with is brake regeneration settings, uh, the fiercest of which is almost strong enough to allow for the kind of one-pedal driving that some rivals champion off-throttle retardation so strong that you hardly ever have to use the actual brake pedal. You'll usually engage this by selecting the B mode on the drive selector. 
uh, though four other brake regen settings are available, adaptive, high, moderate or low. Unfortunately, you can only access these through the central touchscreen. Uh, the steering wheel paddles that most rivals provide for this are far more convenient. Now the reason BMW doesn't fit these is because it wants to offer iX1 customers the Sport Boost feature that we first saw in the company's sports cars. With this, a single left-hand steering wheel paddle allows enhanced acceleration to be delivered courtesy of an extra 41 horsepower for up to 10 seconds. The Munich makers promising more accomplished handling than class EV rivals can offer, though initially an enthusiastic owner might doubt that given the rather lifeless feel for a BMW of the electric steering rack. Now you can slightly improve that by selecting the car's most engaging sport driving mode, but that makes what is already a rather firm standard of ride even less pleasant on a bumpy B road. Uh, a problem which is exacerbated if you've opted for one of the largest wheel rim sizes. At least there's M Adaptive Suspension, a standard which uses mechanically controlled adjustable and frequently selective dampers. Pressure peaks inside the dampers are smoothed out by additional valves active on the rebound side and the specially designed damper system also brings about a 15mm drop in ride height. Once you've adjusted to the steering and the ride, there's quite a lot to like about the drive dynamics here. Now, it's a slight pity that the thick rimmed wheel is a touch oversized because everything else about this car feels chuckable and wieldy, much more so than most of its obvious rivals. BMW's built in clever wheel slip limitation technology borrowed from the larger iX, a traction management setup that allows power to be automatically transferred between front and rear wheels to maximize stability and grip. If you're used to EVs of this size scrabbling away for traction from rest under hard acceleration, that feature will be welcome. As will on this extra 30, the way that the drivetrain can send slightly more power to the rear on corner exit to fire you from bend to bend. You certainly don't feel the extra 400 kilograms of weight this car carries over its combustion counterpart. What else? Well, expect refinement to be even more impressive than it usually is on an EV, thanks to a sleek drag coefficient of 0.26 CD. You won't be expecting to go too far off-road in an iX1, and you shouldn't given the very modest ride height, though a drive-off support system is provided to aid getaways in slippery conditions. You might conceivably want to tow with one though. Uh, the 1200 kilogram brake towing weight is well down on that of a combustion X1, which can in some forms lug along up to 2000 kilograms, but it's better than you'll get from quite a lot of other EVs in this class. <laughs> So BMW's entry-level EV is now an SUV, and unless you've spotted the bespoke badging or the charging flap, it'll be difficult to tell this one apart from its more conventional X1 combustion range stablemates, especially if you've opted for this top M Sport trim level, which comes shorn of a lot of the blue detailing that usually marks lesser iX1s apart. This third generation U11 series X1 design completed the visual switch of this model line from crossover to fully fledged SUV. It's larger than the previous F48 series model 2, 53 millimeters longer, 24 millimeters wider and 44 millimeters taller. A lower rising character line connects black plastic clad flared arches housing wheel sizes between 17 and 20 inches. We've got 19 inch M double spoke bicolor light alloy rims here. On lesser iX1s, a blue highlight strip decorates the lower sill panel. At the front, slim LED headlights flank the large, almost square, but unfortunately fake BMW kidney grill, the inner frame of which gets blue detailing, as does the BMW Randall badge. Further down, lesser iX1s are marked out by blue highlights either side of the central silver plastic lower skid plate. The frozen pure grey paint finish we have here, by the way, costs quite a lot extra. At the rear, as on an ordinary X1, horizontal lines and the narrow rear window emphasise the extra body width. 
Here we've got a car with adaptive LED headlights, which means that these LED light clusters illuminate in a striking L shape and get distinctive patterning in the sections extending into the sides of the body. Lesser iX1s get L-shaped blue trimming corner strips. Here we've got blue detailing either side of this central diffuser. Right, time to take a look inside and sample a user experience that actually starts when you move within one and a half meters of the car with this rather smart leather bound key in your pocket. At that point, the iX1 automatically unlocks itself and there's an orchestrated lighting display using both exterior and interior lamps. If you specify the brand's digital key plus feature, that'll work with an enabled Apple iPhone 2 using near field communication access technology you can share with up to five other users. If your grown up children happen to be among them, you can implement a special configuration that restricts top speed, power output and maximum radio volume. It's all the sort of thing that might make you pleased that you paid the extra for a premium badge on your battery powered SUV. Once the quality door thunks shut, you'll find that the welcome sequence continues inside too, where the curved display panel we're now familiar with in smaller modern BMWs shows a choreographed startup animation, a personal greeting and useful information. At the same time as loading the car's BMW ID settings and connecting your smartphone. Take a look around and apart from tiny details, you'll find very few differences over an ordinary X1 in a cabin that remains satisfyingly upmarket. Highlights including the blue inset ambient lighting strips and this double stitched dash top. Along with a myriad of surface changes, there are an awful lot of different materials on show. Aluminium, piano black, liqueur, uh, vinyl, brushed chrome and fretwork design joining the usual soft touch plastics and it all feels very high end unless you turn your attention to the rather less opulent lower panelling or the flimsy plastic surrounds used for the seat runners. What's important is that the front seats themselves are very comfortable helped by prominent side bolsters and a good range of adjustment. Even larger folk won't want for head and elbow room though it's disappointing that these chairs don't come with lumbar support as standard. If you haven't previously tried a third generation X1 or the brand's current 2 Series Active Tourer MPV, uh, you might be surprised to find that there's no conventional centre stack. Instead, as in the brand's flagship iX SUV, there's this floating centre armrest with open storage beneath and a leading edge incorporating the primary drive buttons, a knurled volume roller and a neat tab-like minimalistic gear selector. Fascia buttons are noticeable by their absence. There are only two central ones, both for demisting. Now, where climate controls and a radio would once have been in the centre of the dash, there's now merely a Tesla-esque style slot for your smartphone with a colour-coordinated surrounding frame and a silver bar to pin it into place like the restraining rail provided for a passenger on a roller coaster. The idea is that you can better keep an eye on your smartphone screen as you drive, which you might think either convenient or dangerous, depending on your perspective. Also controversial is the rather disappointing decision to dispense with BMW's trademark lower iDrive rotary controller which means that everything's got to be done either by voice or by stabs at the centre screen. Still, there's ample compensation in terms of the quality in evidence wherever you look. There's a soft touch upper dash above a smart silvered centre fascia section decorated with narrow horizontal vents. Use of the smudge worthy shiny piano black trimming you get with rivals has been kept to a minimum and build quality from the German Regensburg factory is difficult to fault. Arty design touches include the unusual door catches and the diamond themed Harman Kardon speaker panels. Or more overtly, the extra two options that BMW has added to this car's portfolio of my mode drive settings. Expressive, which gives you more vibrant cabin lighting colours, and digital art, which to both screens adds 
this trending quantum garden piece of modern art from award winner Kao Fai. Now we need to return to the major feature of note here though, that curved screen. The slightly smaller 10.25 inch right hand part is the digital instrument display you view through this lovely chunky three spoke sports steering wheel. As you'd expect in an EV, here it substitutes an e-power power meter for the usual rev counter and there are battery charge and range readouts along the lower edge of the screen. Otherwise it's pretty much exactly as it would be in any other X1. Now in the past we've criticised BMW instrument screens for confusing design and a lack of customization options, the absence of full screen mapping for instance. This display is much better, customizable via a little cog designated button next to this Tesla style rotating switch on the right hand wheel spoke. The content menu determines what you see in the middle of the screen. Choose between a digital speedo, consumption data, a very informative range readout graphic, a compass, GPS mapping, a g-force meter and media and radio selections. If mapping is your preference you might want to select the third of the three available layout options which displays your route to the right of a slash across the screen. All of this is complemented by further customizable settings for the head-up display should your chosen iX1 feature it. Uh, there's a choice of standard view, assisted view or sport view options all with speed sign recognition. And this top M Sport trim level adds in full use of BMW's latest augmented reality nav system tech which brings key journeying features directly into your line of sight. Anything the instrument screen can't tell you, and much that it can, will be found on the accompanying 10.7 inch control display to the left of it, a recipient of the company's latest generation operating system 8 software. All the car's climate functions have been inhaled by this screen and sit in a very detailed climate menu, accessible via a virtual button in the centre of its lower frame. The right hand edge of the monitor has shortcut options for media, phone and nav plus a menu option connecting you into a confusing layout full of tiny icons. Which is why you'll probably want to stick to the tiled screen that you get when the display first springs into life. This shows large widget sections starting with uh, primary features like telephone, radio and mapping beyond which you can swipe right for things like trip data, weather info, compass settings and traffic conditions. It's probably easier though to access what you want by gaining mastery of the car's intelligent personal assistant voice control, in our view arguably one of the most advanced systems out there. It can even learn your routines and automate them, uh, for example lowering the driver's window when you reach the ticket barrier each day at your office entrance and the voice activation element is properly intuitive just preface what you want to say with hey BMW however you access all the media functions there's an awful lot to get to grips with some of the functions are properly cutting edge um, the Wi-Fi hotspot can potentially use 5G for instance ideal for TikTok obsessed teenagers some others are slightly questionable like the optional interior camera which effectively gives you in-car CCTV. BMW calls this a security monitor but divorce lawyers across the globe will gleefully seize upon its possibilities. You might though like the way the interior camera allows you to take journeying pictures of occupants then share them with your friends. More usefully there's wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring plus sections for news, weather and podcasts. Quite a few features require access via a BMW ID which you'll have if you're using the My BMW app and which you can add to any designated smartphone. So personal interior settings uh, and activated features can be instantly communicated to the car wherever you're driving it. Um, you can add to that menu of features in the course of your ownership life thanks to over the air updates and extra tech that can be purchased via the online connected drive BMW shop. 
as you'd now expect, this monitor features over-the-air updates, so you'll get into your iX1 one morning and find it able to do something it couldn't do the day before. Enough on screens, what about more practical stuff? Well, there's not much to criticise ergonomically. The seat positioning delivers all-round uh, vision that's generally unimpeded, helped by the low window line, but not by the rather small expanse of rear tailgate glass. The slim A-pillars are usually helpful too, though their aggressive angling can sometimes uh, affect visibility at junctions and pedestrian crossings. You'd hope for lots of storage space from the interior of an SUV, but we're not totally convinced by BMW's efforts here. You might not want to use the lower open part of this floating armrest, either because it would leave your items on general display to light-fingered car park villains, or because the shallowness of the lower tray will leave them sliding around everywhere. The stitched armrest at the top of this piece of automotive furniture, which inconveniently opens away from you, has uh, storage space within but not much, and some features that you might hope for from a crossover or SUV of this type, like underseat drawers or an overhead sunglasses compartment, don't feature anywhere here. Still, the basics are well provided, uh, double cup holders with twin USB-C slots and a 12 volt port just below them. Decently sized compartmentalised door bins with bottle holders, ticket clips in the sun visors and a spacious glove box. Let's take a look in the back. Now the doors open wide enough to make leaning in for the attachment of car seats and belt buckles easy, which is a good start. The wheelbase length of this U11 Series X1 design, 2,692mm, is only 22mm longer than the previous F48 Series model. But BMW still claims considerably more interior room, thanks to the adoption of a more compact three-link rear suspension setup. Part of a concerted effort to squeeze as much interior space as possible into a footprint that's a mere 181mm longer and 46mm wider than a 1 Series hatch. A slightly higher set seat base than you'd get in that kind of ordinary hatchback makes the iX1 also easier to get into. Inside, the rear compartment turns out to be quite roomy for a lower mid-sized EV crossover with three full-size seats. There's certainly more stretch-out room than you get in a Volvo XC40 Recharge Pure Electric or Genesis GV60, though not quite as much as you'd find in a Tesla Model Y or a Nissan Ariya. Unfortunately, because of the battery pack beneath your feet, the seat base can't slide in the way that it can with a combustion-powered X1. Reclining backrests, which adjust through four positions, are standard across the iX1 range though, and scalloped front seat backs free up extra space for your knees, making it possible for one six-footer to sit behind another in reasonable comfort. Some of the darker trim options can leave it feeling a bit gloomy back here, but if budget permits, you can alleviate that issue by paying BMW Extra for this lovely two-piece panoramic glass roof, one of the biggest of any on the market fitted to a car of this size. As with most crossovers in this class, there's still really only comfortable space for two adults who will be able to use this central armrest with its integrated twin cup holders. If you do need to take a third person, you'll be aided by the largely flat floor. Practical touches include central vertical vents above twin USB-C ports, beneath which is a shallow tray that on the move would be useless for just about anything. Better to put your odds and ends into these huge door bins which incorporate usefully sized bottle holders. You're also favoured with Isofix fastenings for the two outer seating positions, uh, netted seat back pockets and overhead grab handles with integrated coat hooks and reading lights. Right, we'll finish out back. Because, unlike some rivals like the Tesla Model Y and the Genesis GV60, there's no frunk under bonnet storage compartment, all your luggage has to go back here. Still, the powered tailgate slowly rises to reveal a usefully sized 490 litre boot. Uh, that capacity is the same as you get in a plug-in hybrid X1, and only 10 litres shy of both an ordinary X1 and BMW's much larger flagship iX EV model. 
You can fit seven carry-on suitcases back here. In class perspective, that's a little less than a Model Y, the same as a Nissan Aria, and significantly more than a GV60 or a Mercedes EQA. You don't get an adjustable height boot floor, just a leading edge to the cargo base that raises to reveal a little extra space beneath. It isn't big enough to accommodate a space saver spare wheel, but there's space enough to stow away both the charging cables. A couple of bag hooks are provided on each side and there are no fewer than six silver tie down points. There's uh, an optional netted recess to the left while on the right you get a deep tray recess above which is a light, a 12 volt socket and if you specify a tow bar a button to retract it. The inner tailgate includes a built-in warning triangle but lacks the useful light that could have been placed there to shine down into the boot. Since, as we said, the rear bench doesn't slide, there's not as much load space flexibility as you get in an ordinary X1, but the rear backrest can at least be placed in a more upright cargo position if required. Now, do that, and up to 90 more litres of stowage space can be freed up, which might be just enough to get bulky suitcases in on an airport run, for instance. Now, you'll also be pleased to find that uh, BMW specialises in 40-20-40 split rear seat backs so that long items like skis can be slid in between a pair of rear seated occupants. If you need to get everything flat then there's no obvious way of doing it from the boot back here. You have to go round to the side door and pull on some fabric pull ties. Now do that and there's an area that's 1,495 litres in size, 105 litres less than a conventionally engined X1 model. At the time of this test in autumn 2023, BMW was asking from around £45,000 for the entry-level eDrive 20 iX1 variant with base sport trim. Plusher X-Line and M-Sport versions of that model are also offered if you've more to spend. Uh, at the time of filming, you'd need just under £53,500 for the all-wheel drive extra 30 model, that's with X-Line trim, or around £56,000 if you want it with the M-Sport spec that we're trying here. Now, before you fully commit to the full electric version of this X1, Remember that BMW can also sell you a couple of plug-in hybrid versions of this same design, which can each go up to 53 miles between charges, either the xDrive 25e with 245 horsepower or the xDrive 30e with 326 horsepower. As we filmed, these two all-wheel drive variants were respectively priced at either 44,000 or 46,000 pounds. So about the same level as a front-driven iX1 eDrive 20, your call. If you're set on an EV, you might be wondering how this iX1 sits in relation to the next EV crossover up in the BMW i range, the iX3. Well, one of those, as we filmed, was priced from around 64,000 pounds and has a bigger battery with 74 kilowatt hours of usable capacity that generates a longer 282 mile range. But remember that an iX3 can only be had with rear wheel drive. If it's an iX1 you want, then you'll want some price perspective on how it sits against obvious rivals. Well, the £45,000 price point of the single motor eDrive 20 version is pretty par for the course amongst direct competitors in this segment. Uh, the same as entry-level versions of the Tesla Model Y and the Kia EV6. You'll pay a fraction less for a base Hyundai Ioniq 5 and a fraction more for a comparable Volvo XC40 Recharge Pure Electric or a Volkswagen ID4 in comparable 204 PS single motor guys. Switch your attention to a single motor Mercedes EQA or Audi Q4 e-tron and you'll need more like £50,000 with around £53,000 needed for a base Genesis GV60. If your interest is more focused on this all-wheel drive xDrive 30 version of the iX1, which as mentioned earlier was pitched from around £53,000 as we filmed, again you'll find its pricing competitive, again about the same as a Tesla Model Y in dual motor guys, and indeed a comparable Volkswagen ID4 GTX. 
dual motor versions of the Volvo XC40 Recharge Pure Electric, the Kia EV6 and the Hyundai Ioniq 5 would cost you fractionally less, while the Mercedes EQA in dual motor form would cost a fraction more. As we filmed, you'd need well over £56,000 for a dual motor Audi Q4 e-tron and well over £58,000 for a dual motor Genesis GV60. So, in terms of segment comparability, at least BMW's got its figures right. If, having considered all the alternatives, you've decided that it is an iX1 of some kind that you really want, then you're going to need to know exactly what's included in the standard spec. Well, let's see. With the entry-level eDrive 20 model, the base sport trim level gets 17-inch uh, alloy wheels, uh, roof rails, a powered tailgate, and high gloss shadow line exterior trim. Plus, you get servotronic steering, LED headlamps, heated powered mirrors, an alarm, and auto headlamps and wipers, plus a package of Active Guard Plus camera safety features. Uh, we'll get to those in a few minutes. There's loads of help for slotting this car into type bays too. Not only parking sensors and a reversing camera, but also a parking assistant that automatically steers you into parallel or perpendicular spaces. And a reversing assistant that when you return after parking up can automatically reverse you along whatever path you've previously taken forward. Neat. Inside, Sport Trim gets you a 10.25 inch digital instrument display, two zone automatic air conditioning, front sport seats, a multifunction sport a three spoke leather trim steering wheel, uh, ambient lighting, and velour floor mats. In addition, there's the My Modes drive mode system that, via personal, sport, efficient, expressive, and relaxed settings, allows you to alter throttle response and steering feel, all of it better suiting the way you want to drive. Now, you want to know about infotainment and media stuff too. There's lots of it. Let's start with the fact that even with sports spec, iX1 models get the full BMW Live Cockpit Plus BMW Operating System 8 package, which gives you a 10.7 inch center dash touch control display maintained by remote software upgrades. This screen is your access point for a cloud-based BMW Maps navigation system, Bluetooth with audio streaming, 4G LTE connectivity, a DAV tuner, and a decent quality six speaker BMW stereo speaker system with a 100 watt amplifier. The car's BMW operating system 8 setup also includes the latest version of the brand's clever intelligent personal assistant. Now with this, naturally formulated spoken instructions can be used to do things like um, adjust the air conditioning or open a window or operate the sunroof. Selected driver assistance systems can also be voice controlled. The other standard media package inclusion that your dealer will want to tell you about on this car is called Connected Package Pro. That gives you a whole range of media connectivity services, though only for three years, after which you'll have a subscription to pay. As you'd want in this day and age, uh, these services include Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring but there's much more besides. Some of the other connected package professional features include uh, real-time traffic information, which supplies details about the location and duration of any delays you might encounter in your journey. Uh, there's remote services, which helps you locate your car if you've forgotten where you parked it and can remotely uh, lock or unlock the doors from wherever you happen to be. Plus, there's a concierge services feature that connects you to a BMW call center agent who's available as an around the clock assistant for any questions that you might have about your car or your journey as you drive it. There's also connected parking, which offers multi-story and on-street parking information in selected UK and European cities. And there's BMW Maps, which allows you to send destinations to your car from your home or office PC. Uh, now, the Connected Package Professional package also includes Connected Music, which offers unlimited streaming of millions of songs from Spotify. 
As would now be expected from the brand, iX1 customers additionally get a full suite of BMW connected drive services. These include teleservices, which can send you service appointments and vehicle specific service data, uh, BMW suite of online services, which give you access to things like news reports, uh, weather forecasts, and a whole range of BMW apps, and intelligent functionalities, which learn your habits for greater journeying comfort and can read out text messages to you. Now, talking of being connected, all iX1 owners will be offered use of a clever My BMW app that can learn your mobility routines, read your calendar, and even prompt you to leave for scheduled journeys. It'll get familiar with your most frequently traveled routes and memorize them as future destinations. It even has a share live trip status feature that allows the driver to share their current location and time of arrival with business partners, friends, or family. Now, all of that comes with base sport trim. Probably though, you're going to want to start your perusal of the range from mid-level X-Line spec, if only to get a choice of drivetrains. With this, there's a little more equipment and polish on offer. So outside things are lifted by an aluminium finish for the exterior trim and roof rails and bicolour shading for the 18 inch wheels, plus pearl effect chrome finishing for the front kidney grill. Inside, the cabin gains a stitched luxury instrument panel high gloss black interior trim, aluminium door sill covers, heated front seats, and perforated Veganza upholstery with contrast stitching that also covers the door shoulders and the upper instrument panel. You also get BMW's iconic sounds electric package developed by Hollywood composer Hans Zimmer to deliver a dynamic noise when your iX1 is in full EV motion. At the top of the range, there's the M Sport trim level we have here, which dresses this car up to a significantly higher degree. You get 19 inch M double spoke bicolor wheels. Uh, there's an aluminum front kidney grille, high gloss shadow line roof rails, and bespoke front and rear bumper styling. Also included is lowered M adaptive suspension, uh, welcome light carpet puddle lights at night, power folding mirrors, and adaptive LED headlamps with a high beam assistant and a beam throw control that dips them in the face of oncoming traffic at night. There's also comfort access keyless entry, which additionally includes BMW's digital key plus feature so that Apple iPhone users can open the car using an app on their handsets. Inside with M Sport spec, the cabin's lifted with blue stitched upholstery, trimmed in a combination of Alcantara and man-made leather Plus there's aluminium hexacube pale interior trim, an anthracite headliner, a head up display, a wireless phone charger, and an auto dimming rear view mirror. M Sport trim also gets you a chunky M Sport leather steering wheel with a gear shift paddle that allows you to access an extra sport boost function. Now with that, if you pull the left hand paddle for at least a second, all powertrain and chassis settings will be primed for maximum response. Right, enough with standard spec. What about options? Let's open up that whole subject and focus on what you might want to add to your chosen version of this car. As usual on a BMW, there's plenty of scope for extra spend. A good starting point here lies with the various optional packs. The main ones based around either comfort or technology. The comfort pack includes steering wheel heating and active seat driver powered seats with memory settings. The latter feature also available separately. If you have a preference for technology and have chosen either Sport or x trim, then the optional technology pack will be offered to allow you to add in most of the key tech items from this pricier M Sport grade. Uh, adaptive LED headlights, uh, comfort access keyless entry, power folding mirrors, a high beam assistant, a wireless phone charger, and an auto dimming rear view mirror. For the real BMW tech niceties though, you'll need the Technology Plus pack that we have here, available across the range, which includes a portfolio of key features that you'll want if you're to enjoy all of the technology this U11 generation X1 design has to offer. First, 
there's the Parking Assistant Plus Remote 3D View Surround View Camera System with Surround View, Panorama View and 3D View options that together create a 360 degree image of the vehicle and its surroundings. Also included is a remote 3D function that allows you to call up a three-dimensional live image of your car and its immediate vicinity on your smartphone. And there's the brand's clever new interior camera setup, which works via an overhead interior camera that can be used by the car's occupants to take snapshots during the journey to be shared with friends and family via a QR code in the control display using the inbuilt Wi-Fi. Hours of fun. You can also use the interior camera when you're not even in the car using your smartphone and the My BMW app remote function, which would be useful if, for instance, you wanted to um, glance inside the cabin to check where the bags or other items have been left there. There's additionally the peace of mind of knowing that the interior camera will also be activated when the car's inbuilt remote theft recorder is triggered. The final element of the Technology Plus pack package is the one that might tempt you most though, because it gets you the Live Cockpit Professional pack. Now you'll need that to get BMW's latest augmented view upgrade for the navigation system, which allows you to find your way with greater accuracy. With this, a live video stream from the driver's perspective is shown on the center control display screen and augmented by supplementary information that matches the context when dealing with confusing junctions, for instance, an animated directional arrow is integrated into the video image to help the driver take the best turn off for the planned route. Along your route, POI points of interest of relevance to the driver can also be highlighted in the live video stream and tapping the indicated POI icons brings up further information on them, such as user ratings, opening times and images. Augmented view can also help you search for a parking spot uh, this function displaying information on the applicable parking regulations on the control display monitor's split screen view. The final option pack we need to tell you about is the M Sport Pro Pack. Offered with M Sport trim uh, for £1,575 more, this gives you larger 20 inch M multi spoke wheels, extended high gloss shadow line exterior trim, sun protection glass, and a 12 speaker 205 watt. Harman Kardon surround sound audio system. Enough with packs, what about individual options? Well, we've got the two key ones here, the Harman Kardon audio upgrade just mentioned, uh, very well worth considering for 660 pounds more, and the twin panel panoramic glass sunroof we have here for a further 1100 pounds. Also fitted here are three other individual extras you might want, a luggage net for the boot, a tow bar, and sun protection glass. Whatever kind of iX1 you end up specifying, we'd recommend that you consider the AC charging professional option, which for £880 more, gets you a type two AC connector and offers 22 kilowatt capacity for charging. You should also probably tick the box for the BMW Trackstar vehicle tracking system in case of theft. Uh, there's a travel pack with roof bars and a 420 litre black roof box and a cycle pack with roof bars and a rack with a carrier for two touring cycles. In terms of aesthetic upgrades, well, for the outside, it's a dispiriting trend on modern cars that you almost always have to pay more for your chosen paint color, and that's continued here. The only standard choice is Alpine white. Otherwise, you'll need to find 595 pounds more for one of the six optional metallic shades. You'll need nearly a thousand more for the turquoisey Blue Bay Lagoon shade and an astonishing £2,100 extra for the frozen pure grey paint finish we have here. With base sport trim, you can upgrade to larger 18 inch wheels and there are 19 and 20 inch wheel rim options for the two plusher trim levels. What about interior trimming? Well, if you don't like the standard high gloss black or aluminium hexacube pale interior trim, there's a no cost option in either case of swapping the standard package uh, for either aluminium mesh effect trim or open poured finewood eucalyptus inlays. What else? Well, a 
across the range for the few that'll want real hide covered seats. There's the option to pay £1,150 more to add Vanaska leather upholstery in a choice of three shades. Enough with optional extras, let's move on to focus on safety, which is, as you'd expect from BMW, well accounted for. Hence this car's full house five star Euro NCAP safety rating. Like the 1 Series and 2 Series models, all X1s feature the Active Guard package that's now standardised across all of BMW's modern cars, which gets you the brand's front collision warning autonomous braking technology. With this, at over 30 miles an hour, the vehicle scans the road ahead for potential accident hazards, and if one is detected, you'll be warned, and the brake's preconditioned for maximum effectiveness. The driver can be specifically alerted to the presence of cyclists. Should you be travelling at under 30 miles an hour and be not responding to a detected hazard, the brakes will automatically be applied, reducing the severity of any resulting accident and hopefully alleviating it altogether. Active Guard also includes two further elements. Lane departure warning, uh, that's to stop inattentive drivers from veering over lane delineating lines on the highway, and speed limit assist which pictures the speed limit signs you pass, displaying them on the dash. Other neat safety features fitted as standard across the range include an alertness assistant that monitors you for signs of drowsiness. There's a trailer stabilisation function that will stop trailer sway if you've a tow bar fitted. And a hill start assistant to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Best of all, we think, is the BMW emergency call with teleservices system, which in an accident can automatically alert the emergency services. This system not only gives them your exact GPS location, but also provides recovery personnel with information on your speed at point of impact, how hard the seat belts were pulled, how many airbags burst, and so on. If you were to have a crash, it would all mean not only that the emergency teams would know exactly where you were, but also that they would arrive on the scene more prepared and ready to get you to safety than they could ever otherwise be. A potentially life-saving difference. Now, the setout's been further improved in recent times to also automatically activate after low-speed collisions below the threshold for airbag deployment immediately after the impact flashing up an iDrive screen message offering to contact BMW's accident assistance service directly. We shouldn't forget that this BMW comes with all the expected basic passive safety stuff too. Things like twin front side and curtain airbags plus front and rear Isofix child seat fastenings and the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control primarily DSC stability control and DTC traction control. Plus there's a performance control system that suppresses understeer in tight turns that'll also see you experience extra traction from an electronic differential lock control system. There's plenty of braking peace of mind too with the ABS system supplemented by fading compensation. Uh, CBC, cornering brake control, and a neat brake drying system that keeps the brake discs free of moisture in wet weather. Panic stops are aided by a brake assist system and advertised to following motorists by dynamic brake lights that flash a bright warning. You also get a multi-collision braking function that in the event of an impact will keep brake pressure applied until you come to a complete stop. Right. Want to go further with safety kit? Well, the key extra cost option here is what BMW calls its Driving Assistant Professional Pack, which gives you a whole range of extra camera-based safety features. Now, there's a lot here. Uh, we'll try and talk you quickly through it all. First, there are lane change warning and lane departure warning systems with active return functionality. These able not only to prompt the driver if he or she is about to pull out with a vehicle in their blind spot, but also able, if necessary, to guide the car back onto the correct path by means of automatic steering input. A lane keeping assistant with active side collision protection setup keeps you in the center of your lane and monitors traffic to your left and right that might be about to pull across into you. 
Uh, rear collision prevention, meanwhile, senses when you're about to be hit from behind and braces the car to minimize impact on occupants. And there's crossing traffic warning front and rear, a setup that alerts you to oncoming traffic when you're inching out of a junction or reversing out of a space. Want more? If so, that same driving assistant professional pack includes it. Approach control brakes the car immediately if the vehicle ahead slams on its brakes. Exit warning prevents you from opening any door when you might be opening in the face of oncoming cyclists or vehicles. And evasion assist improves stability should you suddenly have to swerve to avoid something, uh, directing the car into a clear adjacent lane with automatic steering inputs. Now, if you're worried about keeping your license with all the new low speed limits that keep springing up in urban areas, you'll be glad of automatic speed limit assist, which stops you from exceeding the prevailing speed limit as recorded by the car's speed limit info system. And for the open road, this pack also includes active cruise control with stop and go, which actively varies your cruising speed between 19 and 112 miles an hour on the highway or autobahn. And in the event of a tailback, will automatically bring the car to a stop, then seamlessly start it off again, returning you to cruising speed. Finally, road priority warning alerts you to road priority signs that you might have missed. And if your car has the live cockpit professional package, thanks to the pack's wrong way warning feature, your iX1 will make a huge fuss if you try and turn the wrong way into a one way street. It's all very reassuring. <laughs>we gave you the range figures for the 64.7 kilowatt hour battery in our driving section uh, 268 to 296 miles for the eDrive 20 and 257 to 272 miles for this xDrive 30. This faster all-wheel drive model claims a combined power consumption of 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour. Uh, we've been getting more like uh, 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour on this test which has meant a predicted range of only just over 200 miles. See if you can do any better. As with any EV, to get anywhere near the quoted range figures, you're gonna to need to drive with the most frugal of the drive modes engaged, in this case, efficient. Uh, and you're going to need to make the most of the car's proactive and very advanced energy recovery brake regeneration system. Mind you, perhaps we're getting a bit hung up here on the whole issue of drive range and energy maximization. It's perfectly possible to argue that a mediocre range reading on an EV might not matter that much if it's been engineered for the fastest possible charging. This iX1 hasn't been. BMW hasn't on any of its EVs yet introduced the 800 volt battery architecture that you'll find in this sector on say a Hyundai Ioniq 5, a Kia EV6 or a Genesis GV60. But that only benefits you with faster charging times if you're able to find one of the new generation of ultra-fast 270 kilowatt public chargers that are few and far between in Europe and vanishingly rare here. Aware of this, BMW decided, perhaps understandably, that there wasn't much point in making customers pay for charging tech they'd hardly ever be able to use and has instead concentrated on developing its fifth generation e-drive technology to ensure that customers can make optimum use of what they have here. Hence the rich energy density in the 64.7 kilowatt hour battery, that's usable capacity by the way. Um, hence also this car's incredibly complex electric motor which integrates gearing, high voltage components, wiring and traction control sensors within its housing and an innovative charging unit which sends power to both the 400 volt battery and the 12 volt onboard power supply. When charging using alternating current, it enables both single phase and slightly more unusually, three phase charging at up to 11 kilowatts. The charging rate, modestly set at 130 kilowatts, is the same with both iX1 variants. In both cases, a full top up from a standard 7.4 kilowatt garage wall box takes 10 and a half hours, or six and a half hours from an 11 kilowatt wall box. 
Specify the AC charging professional option, which for £880 more gets you a Type 2 AC connector and offers 22 kilowatt capacity for charging. And you can reduce that replenishment time to just three hours, 45 minutes. As usual with an EV, there's an app, the My BMW app, that allows you to remotely set charging times, or you can of course do that via the car's central screen. What about if you want to charge when you're out and about? Well, plugging the vehicle into a direct current DC rapid charging station means that the high voltage battery can be charged from 10 to 80% of its full capacity in 29 minutes. Just enough time for a cafe au lait and a strudel, a 75 miles of driving range is added for every 10 minutes of charging. Now, as in the BMW i7 we tested recently, the charging software has been further refined for this iX1. Once the battery reaches a higher charge level, the new process drops the charging rate smoothly instead of the previous stepped curve, resulting in even shorter charging times. An optimized cooling strategy for DC charging improves the durability of the battery. Alternating phases of full and partial cooling power are used to prevent cell temperatures dropping too low during fast charging, shortening charging times and reducing aging. Customized settings for individual charge points can be stored and automatically recalled on the next visit, while via a screen selectable preconditioned battery setting, uh, preheating can be started manually on approach to a DC charging station. As an iX1 customer, you'll have access to the BMW charging package, which opens up for you one of the world's largest public charging networks using just one RFID card or an app. In this country, you'll be able to use charge points operated by BP Pulse, ESB, Osprey, Source London, ChargePoint Network UK and others. High power charging stations via the Ionity network are also part of the BMW charging network. Combined, this gives drivers access to over 16,000 charging points across UK and Ireland. Plus, a further 162,000 AC and 11,000 DC charging points across Europe. Finding all of these stations is aided by the cloud-based BMW Maps navigation system, which, once you've inputted your route, will give you recommendations for charging stops, plus the ability to filter search results by fast charging points, and even information on points of interest near charging stations, should your passengers wish to take a stroll while you're plugged in. All iX1 models are supplied with a BMW charging card, a Mode 3 charging cable, and a flexible fast charger. For drivers who use public charging frequently, BMW Charging offers two monthly subscription packages. If you're converting to an electric vehicle from a previous combustion model, you'll obviously need to factor in the cost of an EV charger for your home and perhaps also for your office. There's still complexity around the best charging hardware to choose and who is eligible for a government grant and obviously the costs can vary depending on the distance from your main meter to the charger and other factors. Uh, now there's lots of advice out there of course to guide you. Uh, we consulted plugmein.com who offer customers everything from choice of charger to installation and ongoing maintenance. They've advised us that even with increased energy prices, the cost of running an EV and charging it at home on a dedicated tariff is still only around half the cost of running your previous petrol or diesel car. Of course, in running an iX1, you won't only be saving money on energy costs. Driving into congestion charge zones will be free for an iX1 owner uh, until 2025 anyway and you should also make savings in VED road tax. Specifically, until 2025, there's no VED charge to pay for year one of ownership. More significantly, as with all EVs, your benefit in kind taxation will be based at a super low 2%. Obviously, the driver will also need to do his or her own part for ultimate driving efficiency. And in pursuit of that, you want to keep an eye on how frugal your recent mileage has been. A journey data part of the center screen gives you data on that and there's also a useful charging battery screen that shows you energy usage in real time. While we're on screens, we'll tell you that in the vehicle status section 
of the center dash display, there's a general check control, which allows you to oversee things like uh, tire pressure and service requirements. Plus, you can use a clever teleservices feature that comes as part of the BMW Connected Drive services that you can access through the iDrive infotainment system. Via this, before each service appointment is due, your iX1 can automatically put in a teleservices call to your nominated BMW service centre, complete with detailed information on vehicle condition. You'll then get a call to arrange a service appointment, something you'll have already budgeted for if at the point of original purchase you opted for one of the two fixed cost service inclusive or service inclusive plus packages which cover you for five years or 50,000 miles. Now with these, after a one-off payment, you'll have the peace of mind of knowing that all normal work on the car has been paid for during this period, including items such as wiper blades and filters. What else might you need to know? Insurance, uh, well, you're looking at around the same rates as you'd pay for rivals like the Audi Q4 e-tron or the Volvo XC40 Recharge Pure Electric, which for this x 30 model means Group 37 with base X-Line trim or Group 38 for this top M Sport version. There's obviously a wide BMW dealer network and you'll only need to visit your local franchise every two years or every 18,000 miles for maintenance, whichever comes first. Servicing should be less expensive than with a combustion engine X1 model. This electric version does, after all, have 20% fewer moving parts. And thanks to the recuperation management system and this model's very limited use of friction braking, you'll hardly ever have to replace the brake pads. The brand reckons every six years should be sufficient. This model is covered by a three-year unlimited mileage warranty, plus BMW issues an eight-year or 100,000-mile warranty that guarantees battery performance, uh, though not to 100%. This iX1 also has 12 years of corrosion cover and a three-year paint guarantee. When you decide to sell on your car, you should find that this BMW's premium reputation will help shore up its value. As for depreciation, well, BMW EVs hold their value pretty well. This one, after three years and 36,000 miles, has been projected to hold on to around 58% of its original cost. As usual, bear in mind that depreciation will take a hit if you load the car up with too many unnecessary extras. Let's finish with a few thoughts on eco-mindedness. BMW claims that owning an iX1 reduces your CO2 footprint compared to a conventional X1 diesel model by more than 30% when charging with a conventional electricity supply and by up to 60% when exclusively green energy is used. The whole zero emissions ethos championed in this case, as with all EVs, is fictitious of course. The energy to drive this car has to cause pollution somewhere, but BMW is trying hard here. Over 99% of the waste generated by BMW Group production these days, over 2.5 million vehicles annually, is recycled and recovered. And if we get specific with this iX1, over 96% of this car's battery can be recycled. The cobalt and lithium used in the battery pack is purchased directly by BMW and shipped to a company that assembles them on the Bavarian maker's behalf, ensuring that suppliers can be monitored for ethical practices. That battery pack, by the way, also uses 62% less cobalt per kilowatt hour than you'll find in the old BMW i3's battery, giving you an idea just how much EV tech has moved on since 2014. Though reaching that figure has required the brand to increase the amount of nickel that it uses in production, which hasn't been uncontroversial. <laughs>《Some Ways After the Revolution》that was the i3, BMW's very first entry-level EV a decade ago, the iX1 seems a touch conservative, but it will better represent the Munich maker in a category where customers increasingly expect their small EVs to be crossovers. Those who want real-world driving range capability regularly over the 250-mile mark, though, may want to try before they buy, because we've not managed anything like that here. 
Still, in compensation, the iX1 brings a slightly more engaging level of driving involvement to the lower mid-sized EV crossover segment, and for that, we'd recommend it. You certainly won't wish for more performance from this zippy dual motor version. There's also a classic cabin, very high standards of media connectivity and safety standards that are difficult to beat in this class. All enticing attributes, but all also shared by the two plug-in hybrid X1 variants that we'd recommend you consider carefully before deciding upon this full battery version, each with a potential EV driving range of over 50 miles and the drive flexibility beyond that that you might want given our country's rather flaky EV public charging network. But if a full EV it has to be, then here's one you can't ignore.